The Life, Love, and Leadership Podcast is a presentation of Marissa Q. Payne International, Dr. James Payne Speaks, and the Foundation for Successful Marriages with Rare Gem Productions. Learn more at SuccessfulMarriages.org. And here are your hosts, the doctor and the missus, Marissa Q. Payne and Dr. James Payne. Welcome back to Life, Love, and Leadership with Dr. James and Marissa Q. Payne. I'm Marissa Q. Payne. And I'm Dr. James Payne. And we're delighted to have you with us for another exciting episode of Life, Love, and Leadership. Exciting episode. Exciting episode. (laughs) If this is your first time listening, welcome to the party. Give you a word of advice. You might need a notebook for this podcast because in between all the laughing, we tend to drop some real nuggets, tips tools and resources you can use in life, love and leadership. So grab a pen or hit the subscribe or follow button so you don't miss a single tidbit. What is on our agenda today, baby? Well, baby, today we got a hot topic. We're going to be talking about how to avoid growing apart in your relationship. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. Ooh, that is a good one. I always say in order to stay married for 40 or 50 years or more, you have to have gone through some things. So... Yeah, I think that's going to be juicy. It's going to be great. But, you know, I want to get started by first finding out what's on your mind, Mrs. Payne. What's going on uh, in relationship land this week? Um, What's on my mind this week? Oh, 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 I know. She shed. <laughs> she shed. <laughs> got to talk about the she shed. What so, in the world is a she shed? <laughs> have you? You don't know about the she shed? I'm in the dark on this one. Okay, so... Honestly, this is new to me, too, but I have been scrolling into these she sheds in social media and I want one like I need a she shed in my life. It's like this private oasis designed just for me in the backyard. So, you know what a shed is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have like claimed the shed or reclaimed the shed for our own purposes. It's like <laughs> the female version or of the man cave. Okay. Um, except it's outside. Huh? Except it's outside. We're moving you sh- out the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's most important is that it's mine and you can't be there. <laughs> like I get to create it for whatever I want it can be a paint studio it could be a sewing room like I've seen wine caves like um it's a little tricky because of course the first thing I thought about that I would want mm-hmm. in mine would be a bathtub like okay. oh my gosh like a sanctuary where there's like candles and the bathtub and the lighting and you know books and music you know, like it's recessed lighting and like surround sound. All, all outside, huh? <laughs> well, that's why I say like for me, it's a little tricky. I don't know if there's a she share with indoor plumbing. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but okay. um, the one that I saw was like amazing. It had siding. There was a mailbox, which I thought was great because like, again, you don't have to come in like whatever you need to deliver. You could just. Put it in the mailbox. <laughs> it had a deck. It was like double decker. It had a deck and a screen porch. So like, oh my gosh, I love screen porches. That's like my favorite thing. Um, this one had like a slide from the deck. It was like a rock climbing wall to the deck. It was incredible. Like, and I didn't even see what was like inside the actual shed itself. Mm. But I was sold. Wow. And I just... I just, I need a she shed in my life. Okay. You think it's a good idea? Hey, if you like it, I love it. Um, Enjoy your she shed. We have to look into that. (laughs) (laughs) So um, you don't really have a man cave though. Like, does that make you sad? No. See, my whole house is kind of my cave. Like, (laughs) Just being home, the whole space is my man cave. Yeah. Um, I feel like if everyone had either a man cave or and a she shed like majority of relationships would never end like Hmm. that's what it takes to build a love that lasts so having a a place to retreat yeah i get that to get away i get that so yeah my my place to retreat is generally the golf course Uh, getting off to the golf course you don't like to play that's been determined (laughs) Uh, and so that's my retreat that's my sanctuary uh, it's it's kind of just getting out. So why do people need a man cave then? I don't have one. 
I know, but like, what's the big deal about the man cave? Well, the same reason that I guess people need a she shed is just the place to uh, get away from all the noise, enjoy some me time. We always talk about in relationships, there are, are at least three lives, uh, you, me, us. And that's, you know, where mm. men uh, have an opportunity to express the me and, and just really unwind and, 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 you know, get away from. I know it's true because like my, I could see like the moms, especially moms of toddlers or small children, even teenagers, because I go through or young adults even because I go through this with my daughter. Like you can't even get privacy in the bathroom in your house. So <laughs> maybe that's why I want a bathtub in my she shit because I'm like, it's the only place, sacred place that I can go and get and peace and tranquility. I think about um, introverts and extroverts, though. Mm. So I'm like, do extroverts want a she shed or is it just because I'm introverted? That's a good question. I would imagine extroverts may not need a she shed. Uh, or or they, they just bring the party. Like they yeah, bring like it's friends. a community she shed. I think I saw one like that. I saw like four or five of, you know, her girls going mm. and I was like, oh, party is like slumber party or whatever. Like, Interesting. I need a she shed in my life. So Interesting. That's what's on my mind in relationship news this week. Okay. Got it. <laughs> got it. Got it. All right. So let us move on to our fight of the week. Mm. Um, fight of the week this week is actually with a listener. Okay. <laughs> You know, you got to stay on your toes with life, love and leadership. Yes, you, you just never know where we're going. Mm. But um, so it's not really a fight fight. It's a healthy debate. I'm going to call it. But um, I wanted to bring it up because we got um, some feedback from a listener with a differing opinion. And I thought it was important to chat about it. Sure. Um, and the feedback was that our relationship could not be considered healthy because we fight too much. <laughs> it's like, you know, it seemed like this whole fight of the week concept mm. um, was, you know, it was like you can't promote healthy relationship, healthy marriage and talk about that much conflict or that much riff. Mm. Right. And I think when we were planning the podcast, we talked about sort of what to name the segment, you know, the fight um, or healthy debate or heated discussion. Um, We had all that conversation. But yeah, so we're going to have a healthy discussion, heated debate, fight of the week (laughs) with... um, our listeners. Sure, 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 <laughs> so sure. What do you think about well, that? Well, I think the, the first thing that comes to mind for me is uh, no one size fits all in relationships. Our healthy may be different from another relationship uh, in the same way that a, a body style is different. You can have two body styles that kind of measure out differently, but both are considered healthy. Uh, and so making sure that you just understand it's not one size fits all. Mm. Uh, no one holds the rule on what healthy Uh, looks like. You can never let another person uh, look into their subjective definition of healthy and apply it to your relationship. If it works for the two people in the relationship, in my estimation, it works. So you could throw skillets and be healthy? No. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) No. So you can't throw skillets and be healthy. I mean, I'm just going off what you said. What did I I say? You could throw skillets and be healthy? (laughs) Are, no, you cannot throw skill. So you y- you can't obviously um, be in a position where there is uh, physical danger, emotional danger. Uh, but but having the space and grace to disagree and have honest dialogue about a disagreement that can be healthy. Yeah, I I agree. I'm just teasing you, obviously, mm-hmm. but I think um, it goes to normal. Right. And I say that with parentheses, like what is normal um, and this notion of what normal is mm-hmm. doesn't really exist. Um, like normal is what you determine normal is for your household. Right. You know, partners come to the relationship, to the marriage with um, different socializations. And so, yes, I Fully acknowledge that there are relationships that don't fight, 
right? That don't have arguments, that don't yell in their household. And that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's great. And that's what works in their household. You know, I know that there are couples that have, you know, rules that they don't fight in front of the children Mm -hmm. um, or that they do fight, but they never fight in front of the children. They, you know, that's like their value construct, never in front of the children, that kind of thing. Um, For us, you know, We've talked about this. Our personalities are just so strong. Mm. (laughs) Um, You know, we are both leaders. We're both passionate. Um, You know, we're we both are stubborn. We're both strong willed. Like we married ourselves. (laughs) And so I I don't I mean, I'm sure it's theoretically possible Mm. for something like that dynamic to show up without healthy debate. Sure. But I haven't figured it out (laughs) in 24 years. Um, And it, and more importantly, it works for us. Right. You know, um, there was a time when, when all of that passion wasn't productive. Right. And um, was destructive. Um, So we definitely had to learn how to, navigate and and do that with each other and mm. I um but but the reality is we have an amazing relationship um and we fight pretty much every week <laughs> <laughs> but but not and not so much in the context that you would consider fight by you know, abusing each other or whatever Never. the case may be. Yeah. Uh, but that there are differing opinions about something that we have to work through. Yeah, definitely. Yes. <laughs> So um, thank you uh, to my listeners who um, raised the issue, Mm because I think it's an important one. It gives us something to talk about. Um, But in this case, you gave us an opportunity to actually agree on something. Right, right, right. (laughs) We agree that that (laughs) our fight is healthy. Yeah. Um, and that there's no right or wrong. Right. Um, so Ward and June Cleaver are a wonderful shot. Who remembers Leave It to Beaver? Oh Come my through. gosh. Yeah. I freaking love Leave It to Beaver. Does right. it still come on? Uh, probably reruns TV land <laughs> or something miss like that. Miss Beaver and Wally and Eddie. They were the model family. <laughs> they were perfect. <laughs> I don't. Whatever. I want to see them when the cameras turned off. I know too. that's right. But <laughs> um, yeah. So whether you call it, you know, clash, collision, discord, combat, you know, fight, we, you know, we chose to call it fight. Um, but for us, again, we do it. We disagree. It's heated sometimes. Um, and and we're still healthy. And for us, it was important to show that mm. because I think we see a lot of couples that catastrophize if they have a fight mm-hmm. or an argument or things blow up. Right. And it's like, oh, my gosh, like it's over. Mm. He said this to me. I can't believe it. And it's just like ugh, clutch my pearls. I got to get divorced. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> like. Right. It was a rough day. You know, you need to reconcile. There needs to be some apologies. You need to talk through it. You got to work on some ground rules. But life is not over because things didn't go necessarily the way you expected them to. Um, And that's what long lasting love looks like. It's a series of messing up. And repairing it and hopefully not doing it again Mm. and then making a new mistake and (laughs) repairing it and then not doing that again. And then, oops, I slipped up and did that one again. I'm so sorry. What did we learn from this one? Let's make it better this time. Like, that's what healthy relationship is. Yeah. So I think what I hear you saying is it's all about growth. It's all about uh, continuing to grow. So in, in, in my estimation, you never arrive. And I think. Uh, something that just kind of jumps out for me, and we talk about this a little bit uh, when we we saw my uncle mm. uh, at, at the cemetery, and we were at that time celebrating 20 years of marriage, and uh, he was visiting his wife who had recently passed at the cemetery, and uh, they had been married, gosh, over 50 
plus yeah, years. Yeah. And uh, we told him we were so excited. It's our anniversary and we're celebrating 20, and what, years. 20 years. And he just kind of looked at us and was like, huh, it's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> and I was devastated. It's just like, what? Because <laughs> we thought we had arrived, right? Oh, 20 like, years. We have made it. We doing something. I was like, that's a good start. Wow. But that was, I'll never forget it. That has stuck with me since then. And um, I was like, that's perspective, right? Mm, Like essentially in the game of life, which hopefully we live a long life. Like we're like toddlers. Absolutely. Essentially, you know, Um, at 24 years now, we're toddlers. Still toddlers. Learning, growing, developing. Uh, I think maybe that, teenagers. Are we school age? Like I don't we're at know. least school age. We're at least school age. Like, okay, I'm a, at least a latchkey kid. <laughs> I can carry my. Key. We might be older because I think we're showing our age in this episode. We got <laughs> Beaver and Latchkey, and yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't an original show when we were watching it. It was you know reruns. So. Is that true? That's true. Okay, and Beaver was black and white TV, baby. Come on. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> It felt real. It felt like it was like you, you thought they had filmed it last week, right? <laughs> <It's> so <awkward. laughs> Oh my goodness. My goodness. My goodness. Yeah. So just perspective. Just, I got a master's degree. I just want to say for the record. <laughs> they clearly given these master's degrees to anybody. <laughs> so the topic of the day today, uh, we're dealing with Three keys to avoid growing apart in your relationship. Uh, I think this is such uh, an amazing topic uh, because so many couples have a tendency to grow apart. Um, I think. Oh, that's good because we've been talking about long standing relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can only have a long standing relationship if you continue to grow together yeah. as opposed to growing apart. Uh, and so I think one of the uh, first things that I, that really comes to mind for me about uh, the growth process. So every living thing grows. Mm. Uh, and I think we have to be mindful of the fact that, you know, how you grow in your relationship, you have to be intentional to grow together. Would yeah. I mean, I think that like we were just talking about in order to make it 50 years, like Uncle Walter and Sarah, you know, you got to stay connected, you mm. know, and over multiple years and multiple generations, it seems like, like who we we've talked about this before. Um, You know, we met as teenagers Mm -hmm. and we are not teenagers anymore. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. we essentially grew up together. And if you stay together, you know, 15, 30, 45 years, you're going to change. Right. Right. A lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it is tricky to stay connected to someone through all of that change and transition. So I definitely think this is like a hot topic. Absolutely, because you're not the same person you were uh, when I met you and you had the hair hanging over that left <laughs> eye. You was looking all cute. I can only see one eye. <laughs> And I'm not the same guy you met who had the box haircut. Right. Well, well, had hair. (laughs) First of all. First of all. I have your hair now. You do have my (laughs) hair now. Give me my my, hair back. My haircut is the hair that you had when I met you. I appreciate you honoring me for that. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. (laughs) Wow. That's incredible. I hadn't even thought about that. (laughs) Wow, you stole my hair. We got to share a picture. I'll I'll do it. I promise I will share a picture on the show notes. Okay, very good. <laughs> very good. Uh, but in, in terms of, you know, making sure that you grow uh, together in your relationship, I think it's important to understand that uh, relationships are determined by connection, not proximity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just to kind of flesh that out and kind of process that, you know, we have kids who are away. Uh, in school and the distance does not impede or impact our affection and connection to them Mm -hmm. uh, because we are from a proximity standpoint, we are far away. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I think, you know, making sure uh, that you maintain a strong connection with your spouse 
uh, is critical to maintaining that relationship. Yeah, I I like that because I think now you have commuter relationships, Mm. um, long distance relationships. And, you know, even when we travel, Mm -hmm. you know, we're apart, Mm -hmm. but our connection remains strong. You know, they say absence makes the heart grow fonder, um, which You know, it's true and can be true um, for a while, (laughs) right? Um, but it doesn't, you know, necessarily you can kind of gain an appreciation because you miss them, et cetera. But if the connection isn't there, um, you know, the absence can actually make you grow apart if you're not careful. Mm, Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think you you have to make sure that you protect and guard your time Mm. uh, together, I think is one element that comes to mind. Uh, about making sure that you are growing intentionally together is protecting your time together. There has to be sacred space uh, for you all to spend some quality time together. Yeah. Uh, nothing grows further apart faster than, you know, just not ever spending time together. So so spending some time together to, to just have quality enjoyment of one another. If you are cooking together, laughing together, uh, just hanging out together, uh, you know, going to an event together. Uh, whatever you're doing together, just enjoying that quality time. Yeah. And I think together there's juiciness, for lack of a better word, in that word. Mm. Number one, there's a lot of things competing for your time, you know, family obligations and friends, organizations. Like there's a lot of stuff that's competing for your time. But the togetherness. So even if you are involved in stuff, Um, like you said, that connection piece or that togetherness, like it's one thing to, um, you know, like couples can like go to church together or go to, you know, whatever community, the kids soccer game and you can be together, but not be together Mm -hmm. or you can be together and be together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, um, that and connection sort of is the difference, right? Mm -hmm. That, Um, And I think that that kind of leads to another key component, uh, which is communication Mm -hmm. and just being able to make sure that you maintain that connection through good communication, Mm. Um, that as things begin to shift and change and transition, that you're talking about it, that you're dialogue about dialoguing about it. If it's too much soccer in the relationship that you're speaking up about it. You know, Mm -hmm. that if you're not getting enough quality time, you know, we've talked about this before, that you're not complaining about it or being contemptuous about it. But you're actually saying, hey, I need more of your time. Sure. You know, I miss you. Right. Is a lot more endearing than saying you always spending your time with this or that, you know, speaking to your need and communicating, I think is huge. Yeah, absolutely. Getting back to what you actually want and need and need. Absolutely. Which kind of bleeds into number two, I think, uh, is truth. And, you know, the importance of communicating your truth and telling your truth uh, to your spouse. There's an old adage that says, um, you know, your spouse is like a full length mirror in your relationship and nobody's able to really uh, reflect uh, an image of yourself back to you as well and as thoroughly as your spouse can. So, mm-hmm. so telling your truth and then being open to receiving uh, truthful feedback from your spouse about how things are going in a relationship is critical. I think that could be another episode. Mm. Like, I think what you said in terms of the mirror is so true, but being able to receive that feedback <laughs> Like being able to give the feedback, number one, in a way that makes it receivable to your partner Mm -hmm. and then your partner being able to receive it back. Like that's challenging. Yeah, we we got to talk about that. Got it. Got it. So we'll add that show note to another episode. I know. I feel like I want to dig into it, but. We, it throws us off track, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> but we got we we got it noted. <laughs> noted, noted. And then I think the last leg of that stool for avoiding growing apart in your relationship is really connected to a biblical principle, which is James uh, chapter one, verse four, that says, but let patience uh, have its perfect work that you mm. may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And so the last leg of that stool is trust. 
Uh, mm-hmm. And that is having faith and trust in your relationship and believing the best about your partner, assuming positive intent and holding out for best, trusting that the best is yet to come. Ooh, ooh, wee, you said something there like holding out for the best. Yes, because it's a marathon like 50 years is a marathon. It is not five years mm-hmm. or seven years. It's not a sprint. And that is hard. Yes. It can be hard. It can be hard, but it is very doable. But you have to be intentional about doing those things. Because I can just, I can hear the listeners now. How long am I supposed to wait? How long am I supposed to wait? <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear them? I can hear them. I kind of hear Dr. King ringing in my voice. <laughs> How long? Not long. Not long. <laughs> <laughs> so how long? I'm asking you. How long you have to wait? Uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And so there isn't like a set time frame of how long, you know, you'll have to wait for things to enlighten in your relationship, get better. Uh, what is the it that you're waiting for when you ask me how long? Well, so I think about our relationship, for example, I can remember, um, you know, you've talked about this early in our relationship. We were on different frequencies. Our producer, Jay Terrell, will appreciate that because she talks about frequency all the time. But we were we were on different wavelengths. And I think this is not uncommon because generally speaking, women tend to mature faster than men. Girls mature faster than boys. And so I was like more serious about, um, you know, sort of my career goals and financial goals and budgeting. And, you know, once we became parents, like I got kind of crystal clear about adulting, as they say. And you were, you know, still spending hours in the gym playing basketball and playing video games. And um, yeah, Uh, I was embracing my inner she shed. What? Boy, what? Can I have my she shit? <laughs> no, I'm I'm teasing. Yep, I understand. And we were not aligned mm. for a minute. And in today's terms, a minute means a few years. <laughs> like it took you a while to grow up. I don't think it took me as long as like you just drawn it out. But yes, it definitely took me longer than it took you to uh, mature and kind of let some childish things go. Yes. Okay. So the question then you said, you know, how do you, um, what was your question? You said, what is the it I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So in that situation, it can be frustrating when you're disconnected from your partner and like you guys aren't on the same frequency. So how do you determine how long to wait for your partner to sort of either catch up or for you guys to get aligned again? Well, I think that is a great question for you to answer for the listeners. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> because it sounds like you went through that. Oh. <laughs> and so since you went through that, how long do you think you wait? <laughs> Um, oh, wow. So it's a heavy question, actually, since you put it that way. I'm like, oh, you're gonna put me back on the spot. Okay. Well, for me, I would say, um, and I didn't, I would say I didn't do it gracefully. Number one, Uh, I was, it was frustrating, you know, so, and I wasn't as effective as a communicator as I am now. And I'm still not perfect by any stretch, but I was terrible then, you know, so I, you know, was a tell it like it is, call it like I see it kind of girl back then. Neck snapping, (laughs) hip swinging. So I, you know, would be like, you know, what's wrong with you? Like, grow up, like, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff, which obviously wasn't productive. So that caused a lot of strife and frustration in the relationship. Um, So, you know, I would leave. (laughs) <laughs> basically and and then you would get your act together or what have you for a little while and we'd come back together right and then that would work for a year and I'd get frustrated again and you know I mean this went on because that probably happened for at least three or four times and it wasn't like a long time like I'd leave and go stay with a friend for a week 
or go stay with my mom, something <laughs> like that. You don't you you don't remember? I don't. It happened. You blocked it out, but I remember it vividly. <laughs> I'm like this. This is revisionist history. I, just, I don't know what you're talking about. But okay. I could call the people that helped me move, and they would tell us because <laughs> I would move stuff. Um, so it was very immature way of handling it. But um, but I was basically throwing temper tantrums, so to speak, in order to get you to be what I wanted you to be. And that didn't necessarily work. Um, And so eventually, and this is why at the center of our model is the element of spiritual foundation. And it ultimately came to, even though I was fussing about your maturity, I had to mature myself as well in navigating through what was going on. And so once I got centered and stopped focusing on you and really centered and focused on me, um, had my own sense of self and, you know, really just began to get clear about the vision, articulating that, sharing with you and communicating with you in a way that you could hear it is when I think things began to really kind of start turning around and you started kind of understanding the vision and understanding why I was sort of focused on what I was focusing on and um, really started getting a new desire for the family yourself. And, you know, obviously then you started going to school and got serious about your education and got serious about career and then really took it and ran with it and eventually became Dr. Payne. So, well, all right. There there you have it. Yeah. So I think if we go all the way back to the fight of the week discussion that we had in the listener talking about, you know, whether it's healthy to have fights in a relationship or not, um, you know, we have a long history. And but it's that history is so long that you don't even remember half of it now, which I think is hilarious. But that was like in our prenatal days, almost, if you would, you know, like the first five or six years of our relationship, which I remember vividly. And you don't because it was like, you know, the very first quarter of our tenure. And that was a long time ago. But all of that history is what builds the health of the relationship Mm. and it's like building blocks. And so that's why today, if we have a argument, it's not the end of the world, right? Because we've seen so much stuff, right? And so we can recognize that because we're disagreeing over whether to buy a new tire on the car or not, it's literally not the end of the world. There are bigger, you know, pro- first world problems, right? Mm. And so, yeah. So, I mean, I definitely think that uh, it it takes work. It's not easy. So I can relate to the how long do you wait? And sometimes it's a spiritual battle. Sometimes the work is actually more internal, even when you think the problem is external. And if you hang in there because it's a commitment, right? You hold on to your commitment and you effectively communicate. You spend the time, you trust, tell your truth. And if you hang in there long enough, things can turn around. Facts. So I think if you're wondering how long do you wait, Mm -hmm. um, I definitely don't think there is a specific time. Mm. You know, it's not three months, three days, 30 years. Mm. I know that there are women and there are men out there that have done all of those. When I was young, I waited three days. <laughs> now I would wait 30 years for you. Um, and that's just through maturity and time and hanging in there. And so, like I said, what I learned in the process was that a lot of the change that I was desiring that as I grew and changed my capacity to manage the difficult time grew. Mm. Um, So the change that I was desiring for you to make didn't come when I wanted it to, Mm -hmm. but my ability to cope with it and to navigate it got better because I got better. And so can't give you a time, but I can say that your relationship is worth it. 
mm. is worth waiting for. And if you're going to last 40 or 50 years like Uncle Walter and Aunt Sarah, you're going to have to wait <laughs> for somebody. Mm. So you might as well do it with the one, you know, assuming, of course, that there's not this always everything we talk about always assumes that there's not abuse physically, emotionally, that it's stuff that you can navigate through. Yeah. But if chronic that's, infidelity. Yeah. If that's not the case, then you use your spiritual centering to make yourself better in the process if that's what it takes. But what I found was you were worth the wait. Yay. <laughs> you know, I agree with that. And uh, it's about time, truth, and that last duel is trust and recognizing that, you know, you have to be patient with your partner, also being patient with yourself as you both kind of grow and evolve. And on that note, we're going to wrap this puppy up. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we're a new podcast, so if you're enjoying, please do us a favor and subscribe. That tells other people that this is a podcast worth listening to. And don't just keep us to yourself, but share your favorite episode with a friend and talk back to us on Facebook and Instagram. We want to hear from you. Lastly, don't forget, you can become part of the show by submitting hot topics, questions or relationship scenarios to SuccessfulMarriages.org. Bye for now. Bye bye. This is Life, Love and Leadership. The Life, Love, and Leadership podcast is a presentation of Marissa Q. Payne International, Dr. James Payne Speaks, and the Foundation for Successful Marriages. Connect with us, find us, and follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to learn more about our guests, show notes, services, events, or to get involved. Visit SuccessfulMarriages.org. Life, Love, and Leadership is another positive production of Rare Gem Productions. Thanks for listening.